Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing the uh, murder of Lucy McHugh, but this one's about Stephen Nicholson, the paedophile and murderer. That's him right there. I'll show you the journey he took in here, all on CCTV, the footage and locations. Now let's get on with it. So here we are at Southampton Sports Centre. This is the place where Lucy McHugh was murdered by Stephen Nicholson. Our starting point today will be where they entered the park, which is just beyond those trees in the middle of your screen now. So on the morning of the 25th of July 2018, Lucy entered this park at either this gate over there or this gate over here which is the same place Stephen Nicholson would have also came in half an hour before she turned up. You can see the route Lucy took on uh, my previous video, um, which I'll put at the end of this video. But Nicholson, when he came in, he was riding his bike and this is the route that he took. Um, we've got CCTV footage to show when he came into the park and I'll show you that when we get there. You know, any sudden death is a tragedy, but the violent death of a child is it, just heartbreaking. But as a girl on the brink of her teens, Lucy was also vulnerable and easy prey for someone like Nicholson with an interest in only satisfying his own needs. And no regard whatsoever for Lucy, who seemed to him to be sexually available. Nicholson was just 24 on July 2018 Lucy's mother and her stepdad allowed him to stay in their house. He had lodged there since May 2017. It seems Lucy had developed a crush on Nicholson shortly after he had moved in. She was only 12. Instead of keeping his distance or even moving out, he encouraged her. She was available in the house, in the bedroom opposite his, and he took full advantage of her. Notes written by Lucy, found after she died, tell the full story of their relationship. The notes give details of the loss of her virginity to Nicholson in May 2017, the repeated sex between them which followed, and the emotions which Lucy experienced throughout. She was only 12 years old at the time. Lucy tells Nicholson, quote, Whatever this is between us has to end. Well, it clearly didn't, did it? In 2018, Lucy started getting a bit concerned about their relationship. Um, it, she told friends it started to get a bit violent. He even shouted at her in her face, calling her a C-U-N-T. That weekend, after hearing Lucy and Nicholson having an argument, Lucy's parents asked Nicholson to leave, which he did straight away, leaving all his stuff in his room. On Tuesday, the 24th of July, Nicholson left work in the afternoon and called in sick saying he had sickness and diarrhoea. In saying this he knew he wouldn't be allowed to return to work within 48 hours. At some point Lucy had told Nicholson that she was pregnant and he was the father. This was found out later not to be true, just a way of uh, getting at Nicholson I suppose. This is why Nicholson hatched a plan to silence her. On the 24th in the afternoon he cycled up to a flat of an elderly man whom he knew who lived in Kersden Court right outside the sports centre. The fellow whose flat this was had nothing to do with the um, planning or the murder of Lucy. He knew nothing about it. Nicholson was just using his flat because it was convenient. He spent three hours in that flat, no doubt planning to get Lucy out of his life for good. He ordered some clothes off Amazon and some trainers to be delivered the very next day on the 25th. On the night of the 24th, him and Lucy had spoken over Messenger um, and he had persuaded her to meet him at the sports centre the next morning. And on the 25th of July, Lucy left her home just before 9 o'clock to go and meet Nicholson up at the sports centre. Now from here, Nicholson goes off just to the left there, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. Now, while Lucy was on her way to the sports centre, 
Nicholson went back to the flat at Kirsten Court, got changed into his new clothes and deliberately went to the Tesco's so he could be seen on the Tesco CCTV in the clothes that he was wearing. And from that Tesco's, he went back to the flat, got changed into the clothes he was going to murder Lucy in, and then went back to the park. And for some reason, he thought his clothes change would be enough to cover his tracks. And he couldn't be the guy in the park riding the bike because they had different clothes on. You can see him keep looking up at the cameras, thinking he's got the perfect plan all sorted out. At this point, it's worth noting the time that he leaves this store. It's 9.02 a.m. and 46 seconds. And at that exact same time, it just so happened, Lucy was walking past the Premier Convenience Store. It takes her 26 minutes to walk from this store here up to the Tesco's Express, where we just saw Nicholson. And here she is walking past that Tesco's Express Nicholson was at 26 minutes before. Time now is 9.28 and the last time Lucy was ever captured on any CCTV camera. So this is the bit where Nicholson went off to the left early on, about a minute ago when I told you. Where are the arrows pointing at? That's where we were. Now at top of your screen there, in the blue circle, that's Nicholson coming along that grass path on his bike in his murder clothes. He must have known about the CCTV cameras which is why he obviously changed his clothes. And this is what the route looks like now, where he came along there, look. There's the lamppost where we first saw him from. Quick cut across the grass and down the pavement. At the bottom of that pavement, it brought him to this part here. You can see on the footage of him riding up and down most probably looking to see who was about, is it safe to do. He must have thought he'd covered every single angle. But he's just watching there, look, riding up and down, literally scoping the place out, waiting for Lucy to turn up. He's over by a little boating lake there. We go over and have a look at that boating lake, um, which he went around, where he was planning what he was going to do, how he was going to do it. I think he's confident now that he was going to do it. So we're on the other side of that fence now, looking in the same direction, just in front there is a boating lake. That's where he was riding up and down in between those two trees. He rode all the way around this lake and then came back. And it's just at that point where he goes off to see, uh, or goes off to meet Lucy. Right, while we're just on the way over to the other side of the lake there, we'll just take this time to ask you, if you're enjoying the video so far, subscribe like and comment that would help the channel immensely and if you do that for me what i'll do for you is another video it's a win-win you know it makes sense now when we eventually get on the other side of here I'll, when i pan around you'll see pretty much the whole route that nicholson took while he was in here now again our starting point is there Nicholson rode along this little ridge here, down the path. He then came around in between these two trees here, rode up and down. Now just incidentally, while we're at this point, right about there, that's the entrance of a path that goes into the woods where Lucy's body was found the next day. So from here, Nicholson, after finishing his ride around, he went along this little path that goes along here and out and straight on the CCTV, you can see where he went, look. He rode along there. Now this is worth noting the time again, it's 9.39. This is 10 minutes after Lucy walked past the Tesco's Express. It takes five minutes from Tesco's Express to get to the park. So Lucy must have been in the park for at least five minutes already. Nicholson rode down that way to take the same route 
up to where he murdered Lucy, I can only imagine they've been there before and this is where he planned to meet her. And this is the route that Lucy took right up to where the entrance is where she was murdered that Nicholson then followed after she had been there five minutes later and then met her in the woods. Lucy's body was found here the very next morning. You can see the video that I did of Lucy and her murder site on the video that I'll show you at the end of this video. But from here on, Lucy is now dead, murdered by Stephen Nicholson, stabbed 27 times about the chest, neck and face with defensive marks on her arms trying to save herself. She died by blood loss from a clotted artery being severed. It's not known if Nicholson stayed until she died or left while she was still dying. He left the park and went back to the flat at Kersden Court, got changed out of the clothes he just murdered Lucy in, back into the clothes that we saw him in in that Tesco's Express. And then he left and took the same route back home, going past that same Tesco's Express. And this is where the CCTV picks up from. And notice the time, it's four minutes past 11. We can only estimate by the times that we've got from the footage that Lucy must have died somewhere between 10 to 10 and 10 to 11, somewhere within that hour. We're now watching Nicholson on his way home, actually taking the same route that Lucy took to get to the park an hour and a half beforehand. On his way home, someone from the police analysis that were checking on phone pings discovered that there was a slight deviation on his route home, his most direct route home, coupled with the last few bits of CCTV. So they went back and they had a look at that deviation and that is where they found the clothes that he wore to kill Lucy that he had dumped. And these items had Lucy's blood on and Nicholson's DNA. This investigation is a good example of old versus new, I would suggest. So you have the good old-fashioned detective work that is knocking on doors, house-to-house -house inquiries, speaking to eyewitnesses, and then you layer that with some of the technical, technological evidence that we get nowadays. So that could be through phone data and CCTV. And slowly, when you start laying that on top of each other, it starts to build a really strong, compelling picture as to what someone's movements are. And so when we had the phone data in relation to Nicholson's movements from the time he left the area of the sports centre back to his mother's, we could see that he wasn't taking the direct route that you, one would expect him to take and that there was a slight deviation. And so we explored that further and then made the decision to then search that area. And that's when we had that crucial find of the, um, the murder kit, I would suggest. When it was discovered that Lucy was missing and hadn't come home, Lucy's stepdad contacted Nicholson, who consoled him and said, I'm sure she'll be home soon. Don't worry, you know what she's like knowing that she would not return home that night or any other night. So here's the face once more of a devious, manipulating, paedophile and murderer who got a sentence of a minimum of 33 years before any chance of parole. His name once more, Stephen Nicholson. Now please click the link and watch Lucy's video. Thank you for watching. I bid you farewell.